the dominant theory of textual interpretation um, in the world today in as represented by the elite um, Anglosphere, especially American universities, but um, um, I believe also um, the Oxbridge and um, Oxbridge, Oxford and uh, Cambridge and um, uh, the, um, the London School of Economics. Uh, so far as um, the reading of text is the close reading theory, there's some there's, in particular, there's one essay on close reading, but it has a varying interpretation, which is basically the idea that um, the scholar should um, not read into the text. And this is one of the big things that Heidegger was militating against, as it were, um, because this is a fact-value issue. So the um, student, but it's actually shown to be faulty within the um, the departments where it's most strenuously pushed to the students. So the idea is you take evidence out of the text to say, here we find this word, and you're steeped in the language, you're steeped in the, what's happening in the text, and then you find evidence, and you're supposed to make, a, as it were, a forensic case, a very strong argument. And... What happens is the senior professors always um, eventually tire of this and they, um, uh, I mean, maybe that's not exactly the way to put it, um, um, just in order to explain and maybe um, distorting it slightly, but it, I think it pushes more in the right direction. What happens is that the, eventually the professors claim we have a lot of experience, so therefore we can say, what we want, and then there's a couple. Uh, there's invariably there's a few professors that are more influential than everyone else, and then they say what they want. So it happens. Uh, it ends up happening the same way anyway. But the idea in the um, let's say in the um, that Heidegger and really Heidegger's best friend, as it were, his closest um, companion for many years in terms of his intellectual life was Carl Jaspers and what Heidegger and Jaspers uh, and also in general I would say the, the tradition coming out of the German universities is that when you have a real sense a talent for some, when you have a real sense for the subject matter then you can say something about it not every and not everyone ought to be just doing this um, mechanical process of uh, seeking evidence from the text and, and, and compiling um, constant that's very that's not that that's not useful because it's useful to have these compendiums and these apparatus of um, uh, arguments that have been made and pointing all kinds of things out that are worth knowing but ultimately you want somebody who really has a sense of what a text is about to be the one talking about it if you don't uh, have any, uh, uh, there's, I think in um, Max Weber, there's talk about the, um, the unmusical, um, I forget how it was, if you look in Leo Strauss, he goes into this, but the, um, um, if you have somebody who's unmusical and they're talking about music, yes, they can say a great many things, but we really want uh, to know what people that have a sense of music say about it. And in the same way, um, almost everything we hear about um, Catholicism today comes from people that are, don't um, are, don't belong to the. Uh, um, they have no sense of the subject matter, and that's why they don't like it. So that's why they're criticizing it. They don't belong to the um, to the thing they're criticizing. Um, so admitting that there's such a thing as uh, um, let's say um, a, a genial subject matter to a person goes against the uh, idea that the essence of the human being is subjectivity in uh, contradistinction to the um, hard sciences which must remain only on, as much as possible at the level of the collective observation which everyone will admit to um, especially uh, where it involves measurement but of course this always becomes 
complicated by various factors such as the choice of um, what kind of experiments we're going to go into. Um, going forward, I want to look into this issue of the laboratories of um, history uh, on an algae. And it, right now in the COVID crisis, in, um, Americans have something different than everyone else's, which they have the 50 states are all sovereign in the case of a health crisis. Um, in contradistinction to the case of the um, of, of a crisis of being attacked by a foreign enemy, where the president would be in charge, so the uh, justice the American lawyers like to um, cite Justice Brandeis, who speaks of the fifty laboratory the laboratories of democracy. So um, you can see today um, a number of laboratories of history that come direct that. Um, it's always a question of um, what a philosopher is doing. Do they come directly out of Nietzsche's essay here where he talks about the three forms of history, including the monumental the, um, people today in various um, institutions and um, subcultures, as it were, uh, do speak of the monumental. So in, in the art culture, which is one great laboratory of history, um, and uh, in the art culture, they represented by somebody like um, Hans Ulrich uh, Obrich, for instance, in the um, is it Art Basel or something, people that are involved in this scene where people quote unquote emerge into, and then they make their whole livelihood there and they live there, socialize there largely, and so on. These are laboratories of history, and they um, they're aware of these ideas, um, and not only aware of them, but they live out these ideas. And so, for instance, um, um, Chus Martinez is as a kind of um, She's a philosopher in her own right who thinks of the, um, the animal and of, um, uh, but she's a curator by profession and she has, but her, what's her degree in? It's in art history, but she all the time uh, says, oh, I'm not very good at uh, art history. Why? Because there's this idea uh, in this essay and it's not just an idea, but it's felt and it's lived in this laboratory that um, we shouldn't be overpowered by the history of art and be um, derivative and be following. Um, there's certain, uh, there's quite a few people uh, you could say that just simply said, oh, Picasso, well, that's um, not, imp I don't want to hear anything about that. Um, you know, this idea of where is the avant-garde uh, in art and, and, and at a certain point you want to uh, forget about the history of art. Um, the great um, Russian uh, thinker of, uh, of art, uh, Boris Groy, says, um, I think yeah, this is already 20 years ago when he said, um, any uh, really, um, anyone who, who really is, is thinking about their uh, making a name for themselves uh, in art history will rewrite the entire art history for their dissertation. Um, so this is felt in certain. Um, uh, laboratories of history today and that's not the only one uh, so let's go into that issue as well there's quite a few things I've um, failed to say here along the way but we'll um, hopefully they are not utterly forgotten and let's uh try to stay alive to um, not treating uh, what we're investigating as um, um, something just to memorize.